uh, now that we've uh, had this molecule on the market a little bit, we've been able to, to use it in some different patient settings. So a couple of good patient groups, so groups with newly diagnosed epilepsy uh, and groups that maybe were newly diagnosed, had already been on one medicine and then not had complete seizure control, we could add it in as kind of first next drug, if you will. Uh, and now we have experience with both of those groups at lower doses, too, of Ficampa as well. And what we really see is a dramatic reduction in seizure control. So with the group where it's used as initial therapy, uh, we have patients out half a year on as low as four milligrams a day, with two-thirds of them being seizure-free. Uh, and if we go up to eight milligrams a day, we have up to words of three-fourths of them seizure-free. So we have dramatic responses uh, in that group. And we have you know longer than we get with typical regulatory trial which may just be 12 weeks or so. So we treat patients with epilepsy, you know, as doctors, I mean, many times we're, you know, asking about seizure numbers and, you know, are you having side effects? Uh, and we're maybe not, you know, getting all the other aspects of the disease. And we know our patients with seizures, you know, certainly if they're having ongoing seizures, they can end up in emergency department and the hospital. Um, but they also can end up in the hospital even with what we consider non-seizure causes. So we're starting to look at that and say, do our medicines not only help their seizures, but do they improve these other areas that really impact our patient's life. Uh, and what we see with Ficampa is if we look at, you know, Ficampa and compare it to other medications used, that we have lower rates of hospitalizations that are seizure related, but also even for non-seizure related problems, uh, which is a little surprising, but good to see that there's, you know, an effect beyond just that the seizures where we get improvement. You know, as the Ficampa came to market, just like all of our medications, they're initially used as kind of add-on or adjunctive therapy to other medications to get regulatory approval. Uh, and then as we have experience, they hopefully kind of move up in the, you know, the line. Uh, with Ficampa, we have the advantage where we now have studies that looked at what happens if we do use it first line. Uh, and what we see is a couple things that are really helpful for clinicians is much lower doses. So most of the patients can be maintained on four milligrams a day, uh, so dramatically lower than what we're using as add-on. Uh, and coupled with that is we see an improved side effect profile. So again, not to say we don't see side effects, but when you look at our numbers, they're dramatically better than with higher doses, which is probably intuitive to many of our clinicians, but it's nice to have it proven. When we add it to other ADs as an add-on, uh, we look at now real world data and saying, okay, what are we, what are we seeing? Uh, we see a significant number, if we look at patients that are maintained on the drug, even out two years, which we would never have in a study, uh, almost 40% of patients are still on medication, so it's still benefiting them, they're tolerating it, you know, well, and staying on medicine is probably the, the ultimate way to look at, uh, you know, are you okay with the medicine? So it, it kind of incorporates both, you know, one, it's working, and two, it's not causing you side effects that you want off of it. So it's kind of that combined measure almost, the fact you're still on it, and especially that far into your, you know, treatment.